Breaking news from around your world on this Wednesday, March 28, 2018. I'm Larry Rice. President Donald Trump said Wednesday there's a good chance that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un will do what's right for his people and for humanity and make moves toward peace. In a pair of morning tweets, Trump said he received a message from Chinese President Xi Jinping that a meeting Xi had with Kim this week went very well. China said Wednesday that it won a pledge from the North Korean leader to denuclearize during his surprise unofficial visit to China this week that included a meeting with the Chinese president. In exchange, China promised to uphold its friendship with Pyongyang. It was the first known trip abroad for Kim since taking power in 2011. Xi reportedly invited Kim to make the visit, which began March 25th and wrapped up on Wednesday. Kim traveled with his wife, Ri Sol-ju, and his top aides, including Cho Ryong-hae, who is considered the country's number two leader. Trump says that, according to Xi, the North Korean leader looks forward to meeting the American president. The White House has said Trump plans to meet Kim in May amid nuclear tensions between the two nations. State Department spokeswoman Heather Nort said that Kim's visit to China was an unprecedented, historic step in the right direction. The White House said Tuesday that the Trump administration had successfully renegotiated the six-year-old South Korea-U.S. trade agreement. The U.S. said it would exempt South Korea from President Trump's 25 percent tariff on steel imports in exchange for Seoul's agreement to let twice as many U.S.-made cars into Korea without passing local safety standards and to accept a 25-year extension on a tariff on South Korean pickup trucks exported to the U.S. South Korea also agreed to limit its steel exports to the U.S. to 2.68 million tons a year, about 70 percent of its average exports from 2015 to 2017. The White House called the trade agreement Trump's first a victory for his America First agenda. Switzerland unveiled a sanctions package against Venezuela on Wednesday, joining other European countries in cracking down on the South American country following alleged human rights violations. Neutral Switzerland said it was seriously concerned by the repeated violations of individual freedoms in Venezuela, where the principle of separation of powers is severely undermined and the process, in view of the forthcoming elections, suffers from a serious lack of legitimacy. The sale, supply, export, and transit to Venezuela of arms and goods, which can be used for internal repression, will be banned under the steps which went into effect immediately. A similar ban also applies to equipment that can be used to monitor and intercept Internet and telephone communications. In addition, assets have been frozen and entry and transit bans have been issued for people, companies and organizations. These measures were currently directed against seven Venezuelan ministers and high-ranking officials, according to the Swiss government. A Canadian man accused of killing six Muslim worshippers at a mosque in Quebec City in 2017 has changed his mind and pleaded guilty to all charges. 28-year-old Alexandre Bissonnette faced six counts of first-degree murder and six of attempted murder for the attack. The former university student changed his plea of not guilty on Wednesday, which will avoid a trial. On January 29th of 2017, he stormed into the Quebec Islamic Cultural Center and shot at the people gathered for prayers. He admitted to killing the six adults in the January attack. Five others were seriously injured in the Sunday night shooting, including one victim who remains paralyzed. In October, prosecutors added a sixth charge of attempted murder against the accused to include all 35 witnesses in the mosque during the attack. A court document filed by special counsel Robert Mueller's prosecutors Tuesday night regarding the sentencing of a Dutch lawyer who lied to Mueller's team says that Rick Gates, President Trump's former deputy campaign manager, was directly communicating in September and October 2016 with an unidentified person tied to a Russian intelligence service. The document says Gates, now a cooperating witness in the Mueller investigation into Russian election meddling, knew about the person's ties to Russian intelligence. President Trump has dismissed Mueller's inquiry as a witch hunt. 
Republican Senator Tom Tillis of North Carolina and Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware released a statement Tuesday urging the president to let Mueller complete his work. And they've written a bill seeking to let special counsels contest any attempt to fire them. An attorney for adult film star Stormy Daniels filed a motion Wednesday seeking to depose President Trump and his attorney, dialing up pressure on the president over his alleged sexual encounter with her years ago. If successful, it would be the first deposition of a sitting president since President Bill Clinton in 1998 had to answer questions about his encounter with Paula Jones. Attorney Michael Avenatti is seeking sworn testimony from Trump and Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, about a $130,000 payment made to Daniels days before the 2016 presidential election as part of a non-disclosure agreement she is seeking to invalidate. Avenatti's documents were filed in U.S. District Court in California. Avenatti wants to question the president and Cohen for no more than two hours. In the filing, he says the depositions are needed to establish if Trump knew about the payment, which he refers to as a hush agreement, and if he consented to it. The White House, which has said Trump denies the relationship, did not immediately respond to requests for comment. The former Michigan State University dean who supervised former USA Gymnastics team doctor Larry Nassar, who faces decades in prison for child pornography and sexually abusing athletes, was charged Tuesday with criminal sexual misconduct and other crimes. Four medical students came forward to say William Strample, who led the university's medical school from 2002 until last year, had sexually assaulted or harassed them. One alleged victim said she was not surprised Nasser had been able to victimize so many women under the supervision of Strample. The arrest of the 70-year-old Monday night ignited fresh criticism against the school's board of trustees, which resisted for a year calls to investigate how Nasser managed to molest girls and women for decades. At least 12 states indicated Tuesday that they would sue to block the Trump administration's plans to add a question in the 2020 census to determine whether respondents are citizens. New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman said he would lead a multi-state lawsuit. The states say asking about citizenship for the first time in more than a half century would violate the Constitution and result in an undercount. The census is supposed to count everyone, said Attorney General Maura Healey of Massachusetts. This is a blatant and illegal attempt by the Trump administration to undermine that goal. The Constitution requires all residents to be counted, regardless of citizenship. The Trump administration said the question was necessary to help provide an accurate count of eligible voters. President Trump has privately pushed for the U.S. military to pay for his proposed wall on the Mexican border after failing to deliver on a campaign vow to make Mexico pay for the construction. That's according to a report in the Washington Post citing several people familiar with the discussions. Trump reportedly was not happy that lawmakers only included $1.6 billion toward the wall in a massive spending bill passed last week to avert a government shutdown, so he suggested the Pentagon should pay for it because the nation faced a national security risk. Trump mentioned his idea in a meeting last week with House Speaker Paul Ryan, according to people familiar with the matter, but officials on Capitol Hill said it was unlikely to fly. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg has decided to testify before Congress to appease lawmakers and Facebook users who are clamoring for an explanation regarding the company's privacy practices, according to a report by CNN citing unnamed Facebook sources. Zuckerberg has been under intense scrutiny after a whistleblower stepped forward to reveal the platform had exploited personal data. Cambridge Analytica, a data firm with ties to President Trump's 2016 campaign team, allegedly accessed private information from 50 million Facebook users without permission. Zuckerberg has said he is really sorry about the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which he called a breach of trust but declined to testify before British lawmakers. He resisted going to Capitol Hill, reportedly discussing sending other Facebook executives instead, before being persuaded that he should go. 
And that's your update for this Wednesday, March 28, 2018. I'm Larry Rice. Thanks so much for supporting this podcast and for listening, and I hope you have a wonderful day.